We beat them last year. Get ready for Oxford to beat Ipswich again. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our coverage of the League One, as Thomas likes to say. We are on week number 15. Apologies for not doing week number 14. It kind of snuck up on us and we forgot god this league just doesn't give us a break as always there's timestamps down in the description you can also check out the chapters feature on youtube as always never do that just watch the whole darn video you're in for some gold use the affiliate links down in the description though we've got various different links for amazon and audio audible but go and check them out it's a small click to you but it gets us some extra pennies and also go and check out our sponsors at grandstand betters they're a superb tipster website we love working with these guys if you like gambling on sports and you like winning some money go over and check out their youtube channel get some picks win yourself some cash but i don't think we have anything to go over we have no previous scores to go over because we've covered it all i don't think i think um just to clarify tom is still leading by seven points to five overall but with all that grandstanding and hot dogging out of the way thomas what is the opening gambit? Vander Julius Shrewsbury, who just hired a new manager, versus greatest side in the league, Accrington Stanley. I know, I thought I was going to give you some breaking news then. No, Shrewsbury are, were managerless, but are not managerless anymore. Sam Ricketts has left the building and has been replaced by Steve Cottrell. Um, Steve Cottrell, bit of a journeyman manager. I mean, interesting appointment. I think he's a safe pair of hands. Be interesting to see how far he's really going to go under there. I don't think he's really done anything too amazing in football for quite a while but it definitely needed a change um, because they've been turgid at best lately but I'm uh, done talking about Shrewsbury because I'm sure you want to talk about your beloved Aki Stanley. Yeah so Arkansas Stanley beat Crew, which is a really good result for them they've been on a, a run they're possibly one of the form teams now in the league they're only one point off the promotion places and they peppered Crew 18 shots they had, although admittedly only four were on target, so where they were shooting from for most of these, I'm not quite sure. But they continue to somehow churn out results. They're looking good. They're winning games. Uh, and I think they're going to win here, if I'm being totally honest. Shrewsbury are garbage. So 2-1 to Aki. New manager bounce. I think it'll be 2-1 to Shrewsbury. Charlton Athletic versus the Milton Keynes Dons. Charlton coming off a 4-2 loss to Burton Albion of all sides. I mean, that has got to hurt. I mean, Burton were due a win, but against Charlton in 4-2, and no one was sent off. There were no sendings off. This was just pure, unadulterated garbage on their part. Um, Milton Keynes Dons, on the other hand, uh, went out and drew 2 all with the Shrews. 2 uh, all draw. Uh, not a lot more to say there. MK How Dons. much possession did Milton Keynes Don have? 70%. Wow. 70%. 13 shots. 5 on target. I mean, they keep yeah, doing they it. They win. just they dominate every match. They are fantastic. We both know that they're going to win this game. MK Dons to beat the Charlton Athletic. No, nope, that's a lie. I can't do that. 2-0, Charlton Athletic. Yeah, I'm going to match your score 2-0. Uh, Charlton, definitely a blip. Really, really big blip. That lose freak result, I would say. Um, but they, they, they'll get back to winning ways here. 2-0 to the Alex. Crew Alexandra versus Swindon Town. Crew it's just really weird they had two amazing results and performances they they beat peterborough they absolutely battered us um and then they go and lose a couple of games they got thrashed by portsmouth they lost their next game as well so really is just like a mixed bag what you're going to get from them they are coming up against the whipping boys of league one and remember remember swindon are coming off the back of playing oxford at the weekend so as i always say what is going to be left of this Swindon town side when they rack up to crew when Oxford are finished with them. It's crew all day long. 3-1 win to the Alex. Truly Swindon's last match was against Lincoln City. And Thomas, they, they, also, play they, also Oxford, they play Oxford this weekend. Ah, uh, in the cup, right? Get on with it and give your score. You know nothing about League One. How are you beating me? 2-1. Crew Alexandra. Lincoln City versus Wigan Athletic. A resurgent Lincoln City beat Swindon 1-0. Wigan drew 0-0 with Bristol Rovers. Is there any way to look past Lincoln in this match? Yeah, probably not. I mean, yeah, Lincoln needed to get back to winning ways. Lewis Montsma scored again. He's like a freak, this guy. Centre-back. He must have only about eight goals this season. Um, 
yeah, not much to say. Wigan did get a decent point against Bristol Rovers, but they're really struggling. Lincoln, 2 0 winners. Oh, let's go, let's go big here. 3 1 to the City. Blackpool versus Portsmouth. This should be an interesting game, actually, because Blackpool have been all right in the uh, as much as we like slag them off. They've been all right in the last few weeks, picking up some more points, bit more consistent. Pompey did look like a good side against Oxford. I mean, it's a silly thing to say because, of course, they are. But you could see why they have been so good this season. A very strong side, very like uh, physically, like try to impose themselves on teams as well. Probably don't score the goals that they should do, although they did absolutely thrash crew in the game before Oxford, uh, where they somehow, they are destined to always draw 1-1 one, one with Oxford United now, Thomas, I think. Um, Pompey That's and the rules. That's the rules. Those are the rules. And um, I think, I th I'm going to back Pompey to win in this one. I think it'll be close, though. I think it'll be 2-1 Portsmouth. Yeah, I mean, Blackpool blew up in the last match. They were leading 2-1 at halftime against Doncaster Rovers. Oh, of course, yeah, they were. Three, right. two. Yep. Uh, and that's the classic Blackpool for us. Every time you start to think about backing them or giving them respect, they lose a game and then three more. And they'll lose this one 2-0 to Portsmouth. That's a very interesting tie-in to what you said about the next side. Sunderland versus Burton Albion. Burton Albion are back. Mediocrity inspired a 4-2 victory over Charlton. This is the team to watch in this round. Sunderland have fallen off. They had a one-all draw. They lost to something like Crew the week before or I don't know. Burlington United or something. Anyway, Burton Albion to put in a big fight in this one and to lose 2-0. Sunderland, though, is interesting because the faith is starting to go. And in some areas, it's gone in Parkinson. There's some guys that do like Sunderland videos on YouTube. One of them I follow is called Michael Bowers. He is, he is in the Parkinson out camp now, fully. They have lost their those two games where they had against Milton Keynes Dons and against Doncaster where they took the lead and only ended up getting one point out of those games has tipped the scale. It doesn't take much to send the Sunderland fans into a rage, but that has tipped them over the edge. Um, so uh, are they imploding? I don't know, but they need to win this one. I don't think I think they'll win 1-0. Bristol Rovers first killing them. Another side of a new manager in Bristol Rovers. Uh, need an up to up upturn in fortune not really an inspiring result against Wigan but at least they didn't lose uh Gillingham I think did get back to winning ways in their last game they kick off earlier than everyone else they seem to Gillingham they, games are always finished for everyone I don't know if that's probably is that an advantage or a disadvantage Tom give me your I, tactical I, knowledge there is, I, I I don't think it matters one way or another in your history of coaching does it does it give them a tactical advantage Yes, a huge tactical advantage that cannot be understated. God damn it, it's unfair. It's unfair, I tell you. Um, yes. I think that Rovers might... No, draw. I can't back either side. 1-1. One, one. I, I, I'm, I'm going to back Gillingham, Gillingham, whatever, to win this 1-0. Plymouth Argyle. Green Army. Versus Ian's favourite club. Rochdale. Right, Ian, so Rochdale drew one all with Northampton, which can at best be described as a decent result for both sides. It keeps both of them out of the relegation zones. No sendings off. But Rochdale, a really light equalizer in the 85th minute. They did have 73% possession, though. So, and we know I, mean, I love team. Stop going on about possession. Doesn't mean shit. I'm starting to think that maybe the BBC's possession meter is broken based on the amount of teams with 70% possession. Like, <laughs> worrying me. Uh... And then obviously Plymouth Argyle lost 1-0 to Peterborough, but is there any shame in that? No, no shame at all. Peterborough have had, Plymouth have had two tough games in the last two ones. They had a Peterborough and had their little derby against... Little derby, so patronising. Their little derby against little Pompey. Derby. Um, uh, which ended up in a 2-2 draw. I would just say that if Plymouth have got those aspirations to maybe get beyond just being mid-table and getting the playoffs, they might have wanted to turn one of those into a win. Uh, but they didn't. But I think that they will win this one. I can't look beyond. I think it'll be quite a high scoring win as well. I think it'll be 3 0 to Plymouth. I'm going to go 3 1. They're coming off two straight losses, but you've, they've got to beat Rochdale, don't they? Pretty good at home park as well. They're pretty good at home. Hall City versus Doncaster Rovers. Hall City are top of the league, lad. The top of the league. Yeah, but it's all tier three. It's, it is. It is literally, literally all tier three. In football and non-football, this is all tier three. 
Um, Doncaster Rovers are coming off a reasonable result for them, though. Uh, their first win in a while, they beat Blackpool 3-2 and a come-from-behind victory. But this is just what Doncaster do. The minute you write them off, they'll win a couple games. They're right back up there. They're 10th in the league. They're only two points off the promotion spots. I... Hull are going to win this, though, aren't they? They're going to win this, like, 3-0. This is a bit of a derby, though, Tom. And from your tactical experience, can you throw the, the form book out the window with a derby? Well, as Man United second and heir to the throne, I can say strongly, yes, you must throw. The In the big out the Brooks window. versus Oxford University classic, did you throw the form book out the window when you played? We actually, we actually took it onto the pitch and set it ablaze. Um, but then, <laughs> then we were dragged off for public indecency as well. So, don't be surprised if Doncaster win. But I am backing Hull as well. Two-one to the Tigers. Af Wimbledon for Peterborough United. So, Wimbledon playing in Wimbledon. What a novel thought. They'll enjoy that when Peterborough go down and smash them. Uh, Peterborough to win 4 0. Not much more to say. Yeah, um, I'm going to go 3 1, and I have nothing to say about either of these sides. Northampton Town. This is Fleetwood Town. Yeah, I'm sick of talking about Fleetwood. I don't like it, and I don't like when I have to back them to win a game. So, I'm going to back them to win this game 2 0, and that's all I'm going to say on the matter. Northampton had a nice one all draw earlier in the week. Yeah, I too won a round recently off the back of a Fleetwood win, and I do feel like I've done a bit of a Faustian deal uh, by doing that. Uh, but as we're already down that rabbit hole, it feels like we, we kind of have to back them now. Go Fleetwood! Um, yeah, I like Northampton, but Fleetwood are just too horrible and strong and good. And 3-1, 3-0 Fleetwood. Who cares, Thomas? Who cares? I do not care about any of these 11 sides. There is one side in League One that has got the form and is rocketing up the league like a rocket train. Lead okay, me in to this main event. Oxford United versus the town from Ipswich. Another tough game for Oxford United. I am hoping and praying we are coming off the back of a Derby Day win at the weekend. I think we do play Swindon at a good time. But as you know, Thomas, that rule book will be, that form book will be thrown out the window. Um, but Oxford have come off the back of a li uh, the best form they've hit of the season, and that is they've gone two games without a defeat. Um, might have been three after this one, where they beat uh, Wigan. They got a good 1 1 draw with Pompey. And um, we don't know how they got on against Swindon. But this is going to be a tough game as well. Ipswich are in good form. I, but I just think there's something. I, I think I fancy Oxford to get something out of this game. I think they usually play better at the Kassam Stadium. I think they've got some players looking good again. I think Marcus McGuane looks good. Um, obviously, Taylor's back in the goals as well. Uh, a beater, I quite like him on the wing too. Obviously, we talk about Goran. The defence looks a bit stronger as well. Fancy Oxford. To beat this strong it should Ipswich Town side. I think it'll be Oxford 2, Ipswich 1. Yeah, so Ipswich have lost two of the last three matches they've played, including totally out possessing their opponents uh last week and still losing by by three goals. Hull just literally battered them, and it was a it was a pedestrian performance from Ipswich, and it was their second loss in three games. I don't think they're looking that good right now. They're looking a bit lost. Um, I think they, literally, I haven't heard someone talk about possession so much since I watched The Exorcist. I'm telling Crawley you. Crawley Town beat Ipswich this season recently. Literally. Portsmouth have beat them. Hull have beat them. You are obsessed they, with possession stats, my friend. I know. I'm just, I'm just telling you that they managed to possess the ball 65% and still lose 3-0, and it was not a good performance. Anyway, I don't think they look that good, and I don't think they know which direction to go with the ball. They only managed two goals against the poor Shrewsbury side when they did win, and they conceded to them. Oxford United to win this. It's gonna be a landslide. 3-1 to the Yellows. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to the madness that we have just we have just given you. Uh, we promise to respond to most of your comments and to be as nice as we can about them. Please have a look at the links below. We genuinely really appreciate all of you guys commenting, liking, subscribing, and doing the dirty all over our channel. Please continue to do that. I don't know what I'm talking about. I may have taken some painkillers. Ian, what's left? Just put a load of comments down below. I want to see a load of comments in the, in the um, comments section about how meaningless possession is and how Tom should stop talking about it. Yes, and like everything else that people tell me online, I will follow it blindly. <laughs>